Often, I like to imagine there's a sort of animal popularity iceberg. You know, like one of those icebergs you've seen in every crevice of YouTube. The surface of the iceberg would obviously be the most basic animals that everyone knows. Then the lower you go, the more obscure and unknown the animals. The middle of the iceberg would probably be something like, I don't know, an emu? Seriously, ask around. A surprisingly slim amount of people know about emus. And what's at the bottom? Well, mostly things I haven't even heard of. But certainly, one of these creatures that I bet a lot less than 1% of the population know of is this. No, it's not a worm. It's a Sicilian. One of the weirdest creatures you've never heard of. So firstly, what even is this thing? Although maybe superficially similar to an eel or a snake, Sicilians are in fact amphibians, like frogs. And if you know your amphibians, you know their slimy skin has to be moisturized from time to time so they don't, uh, explode, I think? Sicilians are the same, and always seek out wet environments. For a select few South American species, who go by the misnomer rubber eels, this means spending their lives in fresh water. But for most species, this means living underground. Sicilians will form complex webways of underground burrows to squirm through the ground. Therefore, they also have evolved many traits of a creature that is surrounded by dirt 24-7. For one, their skulls are strong and pointed to allow them to dig through the ground without harming themselves. Their bodies are also segmented, similar to earthworms. Another trait of underground life is their vision isn't all that good. Their eyes essentially only act as sensors to detect light and dark. All of the other features of eyesight are lost. They prove unnecessary enough that Sicilian eyes are covered by skin, and in some species, bone. Now, most other burrowing animals also lack eyesight, but make up for that in excellent hearing, like the mole. Sicilians would be the same as well, right? Well, no. Sicilians don't follow the status quo or listen to anybody, mainly because their hearing is also awful. Now, without good eyes or ears, it seems like a mystery how these animals get around. But if you look a bit closer, you will see one of the Sicilians' definitive attributes, their stellar mustache. These are actually a pair of tentacles that they can use to feel the world around them. And it is through these tentacles the Sicilians become proficient hunters of their chosen prey, namely invertebrates like worms and termites. Although rubber eels, those aquatic species, will go after fish and regular eels. In order to defend themselves from being eaten, these animals secrete toxins through their skin that don't make them edible to predators. If the tentacles and toxic skin don't give it away, Sicilians aren't like any other group of amphibians. They aren't really related to any of the other groups either. An early ancestor of Sicilians, Aeo Sicilia, looks much more like a very stretched salamander. It still possessed legs and presumably working eyes, but this animal lived all the way in the early Jurassic period, some 190 million years ago. The Sicilians that would evolve from this ancestor would only grow weirder and drift further away from other amphibian groups. For instance, most amphibians lay soft-shelled eggs in water, with some exceptions being a few species of salamander, which give live birth. But a majority of Sicilians don't lay eggs. They too are viviparous, or give birth to young. The ones that do lay eggs aren't any less weird. For some egg layers, their larvae are aquatic and are born with gills similar to other amphibians, but eventually their skin will thicken and be replaced by their lungs. Other Sicilians make it even weirder. There's one species of Sicilian out there, Bolangarilla titana, whose females grow a thick, nutritious coat of skin. When her eggs hatch, the young will eat this layer of skin, which will regenerate every few days until the young are large enough to leave her. Because, you know, why not? Another thing separating them from amphibians is their face. Look at the face of a frog. What a happy little creature, ready to eat some flies and hop around. Now let's look at the face of a Sicilian. If it can't be that bad, can it? Well, you see, the Sicilians have rows of many needle-sharp teeth in order to catch their prey. Just be glad most Sicilians don't grow longer than a few feet. 
I really wish there was more to say about Sicilians, but there isn't. And it's not because they're rare. There are over 100 species of Sicilian, probably more yet to be discovered, and they're spread across three continents, in many of the tropical regions of the world. It's just that, once more, the trait of living underground is both you can't see, and people don't really see you either. Sicilians remain obscure to science because it's pretty hard to study them when they're always underground, in some of the more difficult climates in the world to live. And thus, Sicilians remain pretty unknown to not just the average person, but even those dedicated to studying animals. It is because of this, Sicilians remain at the bottom of that iceberg. Their combination of obscurity and abnormalness make them a truly unique animal. Thanks for watching. I haven't done one of these uh, short videos in a while, and Sicilians, with how little information we have on them, make a good candidate for a quick little video. The next upload should hopefully be another big one, uh, like the Billy Ape video, so stay tuned for that. As always, thanks to the videos, images, and sources I used to make this, thank you for watching, and see ya.